Hey everybody, it's Dr. Blake, the Cooking Doc. Been a while since I've made any new content. Took a nice little summer off, didn't get my hair cut, but otherwise had a good summer. I hope you did too. We're coming back with lots of great content for the fall, but before we start that, let's fall back and do a fall review from everything we've learned so far this year. Uh, there's a lot of great content on my website that I want you to check out. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to that channel, hit that bell so you never miss a new recipe or a new health tip. I'm Dr. Blake, the Cooking Doc, and let's roll back to the beginning of 2021. Um, seemed like 2021 was going to be a better year than 2020, but you know we've still got a lot of challenges that we're facing, specifically as it relates to COVID-19 and the coronavirus, so I hope you're being safe out there and you've been vaccinated. We started off the year with this fun video where I predicted the food trends of 2021. I don't know if any of them have come true, but a lot of them still go for the end of the year and for 2022 and beyond. With a new year comes a whole bunch of new food trends that are going to be thrown in your face on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the news. And I'm going to tell you what I think the best trends are for 2021, what you're going to hear about, and how they relate to your health. This one was one of my favorite videos of the year because it is something that I always get questions about from people who run into me on the street or to see me in the office or just family members. They say, well, I'm so hungry, but when I eat something healthy, it doesn't fill me up. So we went through the top things that I think are most important when choosing a food that will both fill you up, taste good, and be healthy. I'm gonna start with my favorite thing, and that is peanut butter. Really now, I, I tend to go for sunflower butter, but any kind of nut butter that's unsweetened has a lot of healthy fat in it, and that fat can fill you up. It's avocado, but there are a lot of different things that you can choose that have enough calories and fat to fill you up without being unhealthy and without being too expensive. The other video that I love that answers a question that I get asked is how do you make changes that are sustainable? We're not talking about fad diets that last a week, a month, six months. Sustainable changes that last years and years and years to set you up for long-term health. Here's a sneak preview of that one. Now, it's important to remember that everybody is different. So for a lot of people, it doesn't work to just kind of cut things off cold turkey or to just all of a sudden start exercising every day when you haven't had good health habits for the last year or five years or 10 years. There are a few people that can just all of a sudden turn the light switch on and go, and some of them can keep those changes forever, but I am a big believer in slow and steady changes, changes that you can make that will set you up for success. Now, all these videos are available on my YouTube channel. I'm keeping these links up here going across the screen so you can click to them at any time. But if you go to my main YouTube page, you can find links and previews to all these videos. Okay, one of the best additions to my YouTube channel this year, I think, has been the appearance of some guests. So we've had multiple guests on so far this year, and they brought tons of new information to our channel, and I think you'd be interested in them. The first was Melanie Betts, and Melanie is the kidney dietitian. And she did two interviews with me where we talked about kidney stones and we went through some myths that people have about eating and kidney stones. And we also talked about the most important things for people with kidney stones to know about food and how it impacts their kidney stones. I also had a great discussion with Allie and Erica from Courageous Wellness. They talked a little bit about weight loss journeys and making sustainable health changes, actually taking, um, practical information and the knowledge to get yourself healthy, but then putting it into a day-to-day -day regimen that you can actually follow through on. Wow, I really can't believe we've done all this stuff already this year. We had four spring recipes. That spring recipe series was outstanding. We got a quinoa salad with fresh spring peas. <laughs> There's my favorite recipe I think that I've made this year, made in a long time, this frittata 
with potatoes. Oh my God, it's absolutely outstanding. All of these recipes are available on the website, thecookingdoc.co. Uh, they're also given with all their nutritional information. So if you have specific dietary requests or requirements, everything is there so you can figure out whether or not these recipes fit into your specific dietary needs. The last thing I want to highlight that we talked about earlier this year is I made a couple specific videos for people who have kidney disease. If you have kidney disease, I'm a nephrologist, and a nephrologist is a kidney doctor, so a lot of my information is geared towards people with kidney disease, um, especially the medical information, because that's what I know. I deal with this every single day. So I created a couple videos about the most important things for you to know if you're diagnosed with kidney disease and the 10 questions you need to ask right away if you've been diagnosed with kidney disease or if you have kidney disease. So that's our roundup for the first eight months of 2021. The last four months should be exciting as well. I've got some great ideas and I always am looking for your suggestions on what to create, which videos you like, which you didn't. We're gonna talk about no sodium seasonings. We're gonna talk about some studies that I've read over the last couple months. I think there's great things for you to help learn, to cook, learn how food impacts your health and understand the science behind a lot of these things that we talk about. So thank you so much for joining. As always, this is not medical advice. This is just information for you to understand. If you have questions, please consult your physician. And I am a kidney doctor, but I am not your doctor. I am the cooking doc, Dr. Blake. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next time.